welcome to Space with Sarah. I often get asked about black holes. What are they? What's inside of them? Are they portals to other universes? While these are all fascinating things to think about, I like to answer this with something a little more concrete. How are they formed? This might give some insight to what they are, or it might not. I'll let you be the judge of that. Black holes come in many different sizes, and in this video, I'll tell you how black holes are formed in stellar explosions, as this is one of the formation channels that we understand fairly well. In a previous episode, we learned that stars are giant spheres of gas fighting a gravitational inward collapse. The more massive the stars are, the more efficiently fusion needs to happen in their course to balance the force of gravity. Additionally, the more massive the stars are, the more extreme conditions exist in their course. All stars that are more massive than eight times the mass of the Sun will continue to fuse heavier elements in their course than carbon. At first, they fuse hydrogen to helium, just like less massive stars do. Then they move on to fusing helium to carbon, then carbon to oxygen, oxygen to neon, and so forth, until you're left with a core of iron surrounded by an onion structure of layers from previous burning cycles. The reason the process stops at iron is because you do not gain energy from fusing iron or heavier elements. At this point, fusion would not add to the outward pressure stabilizing the star. And as nothing is supporting the iron core against collapse under its own gravity, it starts to implode, which is the opposite of explode. This will happen until the core is supported by something called degeneracy pressure, which is a quantum mechanical effect prohibiting two identical particles from being in the same quantum state. Maybe one day I'll tell you more about that in another video. But even that amount of pressure can't sustain the gravity from the rest of the star. This means the collapse will continue until it forms a neutron star in the center. The physical properties of a neutron star are not well understood, but our observations indicate that atoms almost overlap in their interiors. The formation of a neutron star and the sudden stop of the collapse will create a shockwave plowing through all the outer layers of the star. This is what will lead to the actual stellar explosion, although I did skip a few steps along the way. One important fact is that the shockwave does not happen at the exact center of the star. Some material will still rain back down on the neutron star. This will add more mass and therefore more gravity. If the neutron star cannot support itself against that added gravity, it collapses into a black hole. We think this happens for stars that are roughly more massive than 25 solar masses and we define a solar mass as the mass of our sun. So, we exploded a star and that formed a black hole. Does this help explain what black holes really are? Not exactly. There's something denser than a neutron star in which we think atomic nuclei are overlapping or almost. Some sort of weird object where we need both gravity and quantum physics to figure out what's going on. This is actually one of the unsolved questions in physics. Let's ask Matthew McConaughey, or not. Thanks for watching Space with Sarah. If you're still curious about the universe, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep wondering.